Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a month on Ubuntu. So normally when I do Linux reviews, uh, I do it over the course of about a week. And uh, what you see is me setting up the Linux distribution. You see me using the Linux distribution. And then I give um, a review of what I've seen and what I found and how well I think that distribution works and I highlight some of the issues you might have whilst using the distribution such as problems with the installer, problems setting up uh, and sometimes I do little guides on the side of things that um, how to make it better but in June I decided to do something different I decided that I was going to install Ubuntu for a month and it's on an actual machine, it's not in a virtual machine, so I've been using Ubuntu as my main machine for a month and I'm going to tell you what I found during the course of the month and so it's more of a, a proper review because it actually tells you things that actually happened during that month, it's, it's not just a, a, a setup, oh this thing happened while setting up sort of thing, it's an actual review. One month ago I actually did a review of Ubuntu and I said uh, in a little speech bubble uh, it says is this the best distro and from an installation point of view it's really easy to install and from the very first time using it um, I found it was responsive I found it was easy to install software I uh, found snap packages were actually usable and at that point in time I can honestly say I thought Ubuntu was the best thing and I'm not going to say now that I don't think it's the best thing I'm just going to um, say that's what I thought a month ago and that's what was in my review and so when you do a review over a weekly period you can jump to a snap decision and say yes that's ace and R Ubuntu um, during that week was ace but in this video I'm going to go into a bit more depth and uh, I'll tell you some of the things that happened so I've done a number of videos about Ubuntu uh, during the, during the month, and one of them was how to install Ubuntu, and it, it, it it's um, really easy to install. If you haven't installed it, I'll show you the quick steps here, but I'll link to the video as well. Uh, and then there's other little videos like uh, how to install Google Chrome as your browser, uh, because there isn't a snap package for Google Chrome. Uh, you have to download it from the Google's own website and install it that way. And I did a video about Chrome snap packages and why there aren't Chrome packages and from there um, I showed how to create a virtual machine uh, using Ubuntu so how to use GNOME boxes to set up a Windows virtual machine and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on and then I also showed how to install fonts for uh, LibreOffice such as Arial, Verdana and Times New Roman etc. And finally the last two videos of the month were how to get Android apps running on Linux. So uh, to talk about Ubuntu and the experience I've had in the last month, uh, most of the time Ubuntu is working really well. Uh, I did it for most of my um, home sort of projects etc and I had no issues at all. Uh, the well I guess that's not totally true I did have a couple of times where it hung up and the only way to resolve it was the four second salute on the on off button uh, that did happen uh, a couple of times but what you have to appreciate is when I'm using uh, a Linux distribution and I'm, I'm, I'm creating videos for review and stuff like that I quite often hammer the distro and I'm installing applications, probably applications that you shouldn't necessarily install and are uninstalling and reinstalling other things, I'm, I'm following guides, I'm doing all sorts of things with the distribution so sometimes I will install a package that probably doesn't relate very well to the uh, distribution. So things I noticed, so when I installed uh, Wadroid which is the Android emulator for uh, Wayland uh, so when you use that it puts icons in the GNOME desktop so you, you should be able to click on each application uh, for the Android within 
GNOME itself, and it should open uh, as an Android app, almost like it's a native app to Linux. But for GNOME, that doesn't work. Uh, that causes your machine to crash. And it can throw you out to the login screen. And you tend to have to then reboot because none of them work after that point. I also noticed OBS Studio on Ubuntu. Uh, it had a lot of frame dropping. Uh, so on some of my videos, there were a couple of times I've had to edit. And I don't think I've edit edited perfectly because, well, one, I'm not very good at editing in the first place. But two, um, people pointed out that there's frame jumps and stuff like that. So I think uh, OBS on Wayland on my machine isn't perfect and certainly um, within Ubuntu. Uh, Gnome Boxes was good for installing Windows 11 but because it is a snap package um, I then found it a struggle to get USB drives working with in Windows 11. So I could share folders okay but if I wanted to use that Windows 11 to access the USB directly uh, say I wanted to burn a new Linux distribution onto it, then it wouldn't access that USB drive. Everything else works fine with the Windows 11 uh, on there. It was um, it, it was responsive. Um, it was as responsive as KVM was when I was using Debian. When it came to leaving Ubuntu at the end of the month, uh, I had awful bother creating a bootable USB drive despite there being a startup disk creator as part of Ubuntu. Now a lot of the distributions I tried, I tried OpenSUSE and tried to burn that to a USB drive and I tried various methods so um, I tried the USB creator that comes as part of Ubuntu. I tried to install Etcher and there's a problem with app images within Ubuntu that you have to put an extra switch at the end when you're running it. Uh, it's not just a case of making it executable, you have to put no sandbox as a switch, otherwise it won't run. But even when I did have that running, Etcher wouldn't burn properly to the USB drive. Um, I tried Ventoy, and Ventoy was not working properly either. Uh, it would create the USB drive okay, but when I booted into it, it wouldn't then boot into the distribution that I burnt onto there. And I find it hard to believe that every single one that I burnt was wrong. Um, eventually though, uh, I did manage to get MX Linux onto the bootable USB drive. And therefore, uh, my current installation of Linux is actually MX Linux KDE version. and my next month on it is going to be MX Linux for KDE. So if you like this video, um, you'll see a few videos about MX Linux this month. They won't be solely MX Linux. Um, I want to do other stuff as well. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going to do these more in-depth reviews. I'm not just going to do them all in virtual machines because I have had comments in my videos saying, have you tried using it on bare metal? So I am going to try using them on bare metal as well. And I think I've done enough reviews over the year to cover most of the distribution. So it's now a case of let's look more in depth at these distributions. Let's not just have a surface review. Let's have a let's have a month on, see how long, see how well these distributions actually work over a period of time. When it came to Ubuntu, uh, there were no slowdowns or anything like that over the course of the month. It's not like this system deteriorated over the course of the month. Not that I would expect it to, but sometimes you know, if you're hammering a system, maybe things get a little bit tatty if you um, use it and you abuse it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Ubuntu was still working perfectly fine when I left it. Um, there, there were a few teething um, problems, as I mentioned, to do with creating USB drives, accessing USB drives in virtual machines, etc. But by and large, everything else was working. It was. It was a solid distribution so if I look back at my initial review of Ubuntu 2404 is it the best distro uh, it, it may well be it may be for some people uh, if you install it um, and you like it then continue using it there's nothing wrong with Ubuntu um, per se uh, just know that you may have a, a, a few issues with um, if you're going to do things like Wadroid and GNOME boxes and stuff like that, it's 
it, it can be frustrating. Other things I've learnt about uh, doing Ubuntu videos is they're not actually that popular on this site. Uh, so if I look at, um, I'm going to do another video shortly uh, about um, a review of my site in general, just so just an insight for people to see what they can see is popular on this site and what's not. Uh, but uh, apparently, learning how to install Chrome on Ubuntu, uh, no one wants to know that. Uh, uh, how to create a Windows 11 virtual machine hasn't taken off. I thought it might have been more popular than it is uh, using GNOME boxes and how to install fonts isn't that popular. And I think, I, I'd like to think that it's because there's so much content about Ubuntu out there and by a lot more popular YouTube channels than mine that people are finding other videos that are showing them the same thing. And I think chat GPT and things like that can also help you in these circumstances. Uh, but uh, the way joy video uh, that did quite well uh, so uh, it wasn't all bad and that's really the end of the review so if I, if I look at it over the course of the month uh, I was able to do all my work perfectly well uh, I was able to create videos there were issues slightly with OBS um, there were issues with Waydroid um, in terms of running apps natively from the actual GNOME desktop and uh, creating bootable USB drive turned out to be a little bit trickier than I hoped it would at the end. Uh, so that's it. If you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.